After covering essential facts about the gifts of the Spirit, we discuss how the Holy Spirit works through our five spiritual senses to initiate the release of the gifts of the Spirit through us. Speaking God's word is something very important that God has taught us. So let's all rise up to our feet. If you brought your Bible, I want you to just hold it high up in the air. Let's say this out loud, bold and strong together. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of His blessing to many people. I receive His word. I believe his word and I live by his word. Christ is my master and to him I am in absolute surrender in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. Why don't you turn around to people next to you. Say hello, shake hands, give them your name and you may be seated. God bless you. I realize this is holiday time and people are away on vacation, all of that. Thank you for being here. And I know several will be watching us online. Thank you for all those of you joining us online as well. All right. We're going to continue our study on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We began last Sunday with an introduction to this whole subject. And uh, it's really exciting. Uh, in our message this morning, we're going to focus in on how the Holy Spirit initiates these gifts. Just, again, uh, more of a preparation towards uh, what we're going to be doing in the weeks to come. Uh, one of the reasons why we are, you know, studying this and talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit is because we want to see every believer, every one of us, moving. In these gifts. These gifts, the gift of the Holy Spirit, are not just, you know, for some special people and they don't just function only on Sunday morning, something happens. You know, all of these are notions we've had which are actually wrong. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are for every believer and they are for all of us uh, to experience every day of the week, anytime, anywhere. And really, that's what we want to move towards, to bring all of us to a place where we see these gifts operating through our lives and, and, and really have impact and influence uh, on the world around us uh, as we progress in this and, and bring all of us into being that kind of people, that kind of community. And uh, like I may have mentioned earlier, it's like our toolbox. The gift of the Holy Spirit are like our toolbox. You know, uh, if you call an electrician home and you want him to do some work in your home, he may come dressed up in the nice whatever uniform that he may come in. He may bring your certificates with him and say, you know, I graduated from this place. I have a degree in, you know, being an electrician, whatever. All that is good. But if he doesn't bring his toolbox, he's not going to be do, able to do too much. He needs his toolbox. He needs the tools to be able to do the job. And so the gifts of the Spirit are like our toolbox for each of us. But when we go out into the world to impact the world with the power of the Holy Spirit, we need our toolbox. We need to know how to use these tools that God has made available to us as believers. And that's what we're after, to help each one of us understand how to use these tools and, uh, and, and just see them at work. I want to just quickly before we get into actually talking about how the Holy Spirit initiates these gifts, I want to just quickly uh, talk a little bit about the Corinthian church. We, uh, last Sunday, we gave a little background of Paul's uh, epistle, the first and the second epistle to Corinthians, uh, how he had spent about 18 months at Corinth, establishing the church there. And then after 18 months, he moved on. He went to other places. Uh, but within 18 months, he established a really powerful church in terms of spiritual things. 
Yes, the church had problems in you know certain areas. We had mentioned them last week. But in terms of spiritual things, the church was really powerful. And just in 18 months. And that's something I just want us to look at. When you read Paul's epistles, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, and you try to examine, say, you know, what kind of a church was Corinth? In 18 months, what did they become? What kind of a church were they? Here are some things you will glean from Paul's epistles. And I'm just going to make mention of these. These are not on your slides, but you can trust me. They're in the Bible. Uh, Paul states in 1st Corinthians chapter 1, verse 5, he tells the Corinthians, hey, you are enriched in everything by him, by the Lord, in all utterance, in all knowledge. People, he says, Corinth, you've been enriched, you've been made rich by the Lord in all utterance, in all the vocal gifts, and in all knowledge, in all revelation gifts. You've been enriched by the Lord. He says in verse 7 of chapter 1, 1 Corinthians, he says, he tells the Corinthians, you come short in no gift. He says, you're lacking in no gift. I mean, imagine a community of believers uh, together. And he tells them, you don't lack any gift. You come short in no gift. You've got it functioning, operating in you. In uh, chapter 5 and verse 5 of 1 Corinthians, he says, The power of the Lord is present when you gather together. Imagine, they're coming together in worship, their worship gatherings, and the power of the Lord is evident. In their midst. He tells them uh, in chapter 14, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 12, he says, You are zealous of spiritual gifts. So here's a group of people, everybody is zealous, is eager, is excited about the gifts of the Spirit. And we want to be like that. I think that's a good thing. To be excited about the gifts of the Spirit. He says, You are zealous of spiritual gifts. In uh, chapter 14, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 18, he says, you know, they're all speaking in tongues. And he says, I thank my God. I speak in tongues more than all of you. Meaning, here was a group of people who really spoke in tongues. And Paul is saying, you know, you guys are doing good. And he's talking about his own commitment to praying in tongues. And here's an amazing verse. 1 Corinthians 14, 26, Paul says, whenever you come together, each of you has a psalm has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation, let all things be done for edification. 1 Corinthians 14, 26. He said, when you all come together, how do you all come together? Oh man, today I have to go to church and sit through two hours. That's not how they come together. He says, when you all come together, each of you, you're coming with something. You've come with a song, with a psalm, with a tongue, with an interpretation, with a revelation, with a teaching. They're coming with those gifts ready to pour out to one another. Isn't that exciting? That when you come to church, you're saying, God, use me today to speak a word to somebody who needs it. Use me today to maybe share something I've learned with somebody. They come like that. When you come together, each of you has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation, has a teaching, has a song. Something you're bringing together to the common gathering, the church gathering. And he says, let all things be done. Now he's saying, no, 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 don't. He's not saying, don't do it. He's saying, let all things be done. He's encouraging it. Go ahead, do it. But just make sure it's decently and in order. Just do it right. Do it properly. But do it. So, I think when you look at the Corinthian church, in terms of the spiritual dynamics, and the working of the Spirit, it was wonderful. It's something we must pursue. And say, God, that's the kind of people we want to be. That when we gather together, whether it's in our life groups, or whether you meet with one other person for coffee, or whether you, we meet like this on Sunday, God, I'm coming, I want to give something to somebody. I want to bless somebody with a gift that you put in me. Or maybe some revelation I've received. Some, or a song that's in my heart. Something I want to bless somebody with it. I want to give it out. So we come to minister to one another with these gifts. Amen? Now, of course, you know, not everybody is going to get a chance on the mic. That's not practical. We can't do it. But as you interact with people, as you talk to one another... Uh, after service, before the service, during prayer time. You know, you're looking for opportunities. How can I bless somebody? 
How can I minister to somebody with these gifts that God has put and made available for us? Amen? So I think it's beautiful to see the Corinthian church uh, from the, this perspective as the working uh, of the Holy Spirit uh, from that perspective. Now, I want to spend a little time here just um, doing a quick overview of the gifts. And all of this is foundational to what we're going to do in the weeks to come. Uh, we read about these nine gifts to the Holy Spirit and from 1 Corinthians 12, verses 7 through 11. Now, for our study purposes, we break them into three groupings. Uh, or, or these nine gifts, three groupings of three each. We talk about the revelation gifts or gifts that reveal something. This is the gift of the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and discerning of spirit. Then we talk about the vocal gifts, gifts that say something. You speak them out. Tongues, the in interpretation of tongues, and prophecy. And then we talk about gifts that do something, the power gifts, gifts that make something happen. Uh, we talk about gifts of healings, workings of miracles, and faith. So what we're going to do, picking up from next Sunday, is talk about each of these groupings. We'll talk next Sunday about the revelation gifts. We look at each one of them, how they operate, and how you and I can, you know, some guidelines on how we can position ourselves to release the revelation gifts. And then we'll do the vocal gifts, and then we'll do the power gifts. And, and then further on, we'll talk about how to build up in each of these areas. So that's just for us, you know, for our teaching purposes, we categorize them in that manner. Let me just give you a quick overview of the gifts, and then we will talk about how the Holy Spirit initiates each of these through our lives. As an overview, here are some things for us to remember. First of all, the gifts of the Spirit are given to all believers. And some of these things I'm repeating from last Sunday. All of these nine gifts are given to all believers. So no believer needs to say, oh, the Holy Spirit doesn't want to work through me. He's got, you know, somebody there was special, somebody there was special, but poor old me. No. The gifts of the Spirit are for all believers, regardless of your age, regardless of, you know, whatever. No, no criteria. It's for all believers. You're a believer. Holy Spirit's waiting to work through you. You see that in Paul's writings. He says, you know, the manifestation of the Spirit are given to each one. He didn't say to some, but he said to each one, everyone. 1 Corinthians 12, 7, again in verse 11. 1 Corinthians 12, 31, he tells us all to covet the best gifts. Chapter 14, verse 1 of 1 Corinthians says, we must all pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. So it's, all, it's an invitation for all of us. The second thing about the gifts of the Spirit is that the gifts of the Spirit are supernatural manifestations of the Spirit. Manifestation means to make visible. How do you know the Holy Spirit is there? Through the expression of the gifts. Because the gifts are manifestation, making visible of the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. They're manifestations. This is how we know the Holy Spirit is here. He's doing something. He's, 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 he's moving. He's working. It's through the gifts. Thirdly, the gifts of the Spirit are gifts of grace. We said this last Sunday. The Greek there is charisma. Comes to the root charis. Charis means grace. These are gifts of grace. That means I don't do anything to earn it. I don't, you know, qualify for it. It's just that God releases them through all of us based on grace. And we just flow. We just make ourselves available. Number four, the gifts of the Spirit are given to edify people and glorify Christ. Now this is the real motivation. That the gifts of the Spirit are to edify people, to build people up. The gifts of the Spirit are not another star you put on your badge here. Well, look, I've got five stars. Five gifts so far, <laughs> And the highest is nine stars. You know. <laughs> no, it's nothing like that. They're given to edify people and to glorify Christ. That's it. Because when we serve one another with the gifts, we are helping. We are blessing. We are encouraging. We are building people up. And they're glorifying Jesus. That's the motivation here. That through these gifts, people are built up and Jesus Christ is glorified. Number five. The gifts of the Spirit are manifested as we walk in love 
desire the gifts, and step out in faith. There are just three things you and I need to do from our side. First, walk in love. So what's the motivation? Why do you want to prophesy? Why do you want a word of knowledge? Why do you want a word of wisdom? Why? Because of love. God, I love that person. I feel your love flowing out through me towards that person. In their situation, in their need. They may be sick. God, I am moved with love for them. They may be confused. God, I am moved with love for them. If I can speak a word that will give them some wisdom to s- solve their problem. Or if they are in a difficult situation. God, I want a miracle to take place. So I am moved with love. So that's the first thing. Moved with love. For that person. That's why you're, you want these things. Walk in love. Walk the more excellent way. Be motivated by love. See, when love motivates you, you're on track. You're on the right track. When you see a person and you're, you're stirred with love, you're stirred with compassion. God, help! I want to help that person. You're on the right track. First, you walk in. The second thing we do is we desire. God, I know I can't help this person. God, I have nothing to say. But I know there is something called word of wisdom. I know there is something called word of knowledge. I know there is something called prophecy. Where God can give me something to give this person. Amen. In my own self, God, I move with compassion, but I'm also helpless. I, I, I don't know, but I can desire. I can desire, I can desire the spiritual gifts. You can desire. So walk in love, desire spiritual gifts, and then step out in faith. So that's our part. Okay, I step out in faith. I take risks. Because this is beyond our logic. This is beyond our ability to figure out. So that's where you step out in faith. Three things, three simple things you and I need to do. We'll talk more about these uh, a little later on, but I'm just putting it out here. To get started. Number six, we mentioned this earlier. Every believer can manifest all nine of these gifts. See, the gifts don't belong to me. It doesn't belong to you. They are called the gifts of the Spirit. They belong to the Holy Spirit. I mean, He is the one who has these gifts. If He has you, then He can manifest all of them through you. So it's not like, oh, I got one, I got two. It's not like that. As long as you make yourself available to the Spirit of God, He can operate, He can release all nine, any of the nine through your life as and when the the need arises. So be open to all nine. Don't rule any of them out. Uh, There are scriptures to all of these. These are in the sermon notes. So you could, you know, get the notes and, and, and look at the scriptures. I'm just giving you the main points here. Number seven, the best gifts are the gifts needed for the occasion, like we said last Sunday. So you see somebody sick, what's the best gift? Gifts of healings. You see somebody who has a, you know, uh, they need counsel. A word of wisdom, Lord, is the best gift to help this person. Uh, So the best gift is the gift or the best gifts are the gifts that are needed for the occasion. Number eight. Because spiritual things can be taught, believers can be taught and trained in the release of the gifts of the Spirit. You know, some people have a problem with this statement. How can you train other people in the gifts? Hey, spiritual things can be taught. We can talk, teach things, spiritual things. That's why we have Bible colleges or seminaries. <laughs> we teach spiritual things. So spiritual things can be taught. And so we can teach, we can train people. This is how the Holy Spirit moves. This is where you need to yield. This is how you need to cooperate. You need to work together with the Holy Spirit. So we can teach those things. We can train people in those things. Then you do practice. You practice, you test it. You work, you journey with the Spirit of God. And you learn how to become available to the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, they had what was called the schools of the prophets. Samuel, the great prophet, he started it. And he established the schools of the prophets in many different places. And uh, it's very likely that Elijah and Elisha and other 
many unnamed prophets came out of that, those schools, and they ministered all across the lands. So they trained people in that, and it's, it's, it's something we can train people in. Number nine, often spiritual gifts flow in conjunction with one another to accomplish a specific work that God wants done. Meaning, although we categorize them as nine gifts, when you minister, many a times the, work, the gifts flow together. As you're ministering to pers a person, you'll have a word of knowledge revealing something about their past. You will have a word of wisdom giving them instructions for their future. You'll have a word of prophecy encouraging them, addressing a specific area of need. Gifts of healings and miracles will flow. So that all flows like one gift pack. And you and I don't need to be worried. Oh, that's a word of knowledge. Oh, that's a word of wisdom. That's a no, no, relax. Just release. Just release what God gives you. Right? They flow together. So you don't have to, you know, try to be very distinct about it when you're ministering to somebody. For teaching and instruction, we break them down. We explain each one. We show how each one works. But in reality, in real life, when you're ministering to people, it just flows together. Very often, there'll be a word of knowledge, gifts of healings and working miracles all happening together. Uh, bringing healing to a person. You may call out a certain condition. And uh, that is a word of knowledge. That means you recognize God is revealing a specific situation. Along with that, a healing will flow, that God will heal that person in, a, in that in part of their body. But along with that, there will be a miracle because a miracle sometimes is doing what healing cannot do. If, uh, you know, if, uh, uh, if they don't have an organ, something coming back there, that's a miracle. So a word of knowledge, gifts of healing, miracle will just flow all together up resolving the problem that they have in their body. When, so when you're ministering, you're not going to be drawing any distinction between these. You're just going to let it happen through you as the Holy Spirit wills. A few more points here. Gifts empower membership gifts and ministry gifts. So we talked about this last Sunday. Every believer has a membership role and a function in the body. And God has given grace on your life for those things. And the gifts of the Holy Spirit are useful to you to fulfill your membership function. So example, if you are a businessman, say I'm a businessman, doesn't sound very spiritual, that's my membership function, I just make money and make money and make money. Very nice. <laughs> so but what the, how do the gifts of the Spirit have anything to do with me being a businessman? That's what God's called me to be. How do the gifts of the Spirit, well, as you will learn next Sunday, the gift of the word of wisdom can show you, guide you in your decision making, in your business. The gift of the word of knowledge can reveal facts that you may not know by yourself when you're doing business. The discerning of spirits can keep you from getting into wrong deals, signing wrong contracts, getting trapped in difficult situations that you shouldn't be in. You will discern what's in the hearts of people. So these gifts are very useful. And how about when you are interacting with people in your business? You're going to meet people who are sick. You're going to meet people who need miracles. You're going to meet people who need an encouragement. You can use these gifts to minister to them right there in the marketplace. Amen? So these are relevant, useful, even to somebody who is in business. Many of the miracles that Jesus did didn't happen inside the synagogue. They happened out in the marketplace. Amen? So, regardless of your membership, gifting, calling, role, or function in the body, these gifts serve you, help you to carry out your membership function. And for those of us who have a ministry function, you may be in the fivefold ministry, again, these gifts come and help you uh, fulfill your ministry gifting. Number 11, the gifts of spirit are no indication of spiritual maturity. Now, this is important. You know, the Corinthian church were not very spiritually mature. As we said, Paul just spent 18 months. He got them all started as believers. They weren't very mature. In fact, they had a lot of problems. They were fighting with each other, arguing with each other, and all kinds of things. So Paul called them, you are spiritually your babies. That's what he tells them in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. So you're spiritually babies. They are not spiritually mature. But yet, they had a lot of the gifts of the Spirit operating to their lives. They had the moving of the Spirit. So I want us to understand there is a difference between spiritual sensitivity and spiritual maturity. 
to operate and move in the gifts of the Spirit, you just need to be spiritually sensitive, keen to things of the Spirit. You don't need to be very mature. You just need to be keen, spiritually sensitive. So being spiritually sensitive opens up your life to the working of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit. Spiritual maturity has to do with character, with growing in spiritual understanding, with becoming more Christ-like. Both are important, and you need both. You with me? But understand that the gifts of the Spirit are no indicator of your spiritual maturity. These are two different things. We need to grow up in both areas. Twelve, the gifts of the Spirit can be manifested anywhere at any time. This is something uh, is, I really want all of us to get a hold of. You know, when you are traveling, let's say you get into a taxi cab, the man is sitting there, he's driving you to the airport or driving you somewhere. Hey, become accustomed to saying, God, do you have a word for this person? It should be normal for you and me. So inside a taxi, yeah. To a total stranger, yeah. Because God loves him. God cares about him. Say, but he's from the north. He might beat me up. <laughs> or he's from somewhere else. God loves him. Period. Amen. So don't look at, you know, all those things. God loves him. And so you, I say, God, do you have a word for them? Is there something I can give to him? God, I love this man. Last night we ordered pizza. So the pizza, okay, I'm not supposed to talk about personal things, but anyway. <laughs> The man came, he delivered pizza, gave him a little tip. But in my heart, I said, God, he has a young man. His job is to deliver pizza. But God, can there be hope? Can there, I mean, I just moved with compassion for him. He just came to the door to deliver, hardly there for, you know, five minutes or less. But reaching out with compassion. God, I love him. Can I do something? Can he have something better in life than just delivering pizzas? See, you can have compassion for people anytime, anywhere, any place. Even for the pizza guy. You may not like the pizza. Love the guy. <laughs> love him. So look at people with compassion. Anywhere, anytime. Be moved with compassion. You go to a restaurant, the people waiting on you. Be moved with compassion with those people who wait on you. God, this man, this woman, do they have a better future? Can I do something to help them? Can I say something to encourage them? It starts with that compassion. Anytime, anywhere. And out of that compassion, you tap in saying, God, do you have something to say? Do you want me to do something? And then you move as the Lord leads. But the point I want to put across in our hearts is anytime, anywhere, step out. Minister to people. Amen? And the last point here, number 13, is corporate collective expectation and desire can increase the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. That means when you come together together, Every Sunday morning or in your life group or you come with expectation. God, I want to see your power. I want to see the gifts operating through my life, through other people. You come with that expectation. And when there is that, when there, when the, there's that kind of expectation, a pull in the spirit, you are going to see more and more of God's working through your life. Amen. See, when ministering to people, I can tell when somebody is pulling. Because suddenly, I, would, I just feel the freedom to flow in the prophetic or in the gifts, just picking a flow. And it's not because I have done anything different. It's just that their pull is stronger. They are pulling in the spirit. And so these things just flow. It's so much easier that way. So you come with expectation. God, I want to see something. God, I want to receive something. I want to give something in the spirit through the Holy Spirit. So that expectation we must have. So now before we 
close, let me get into the main part of what I want to talk about this morning, is to help us all understand how the Holy Spirit initiates the release of the gifts. What the Bible makes clear to us is that our spirit has at least five senses, just like our body has five senses. So all of us are tripart beings. We are spirit, soul, and body. The body is the outside part. We all see each other. The soul is our mind, our will, our emotions, the intellectual, the emotional, the mental part of us. And our spirit is the eternal part of us which connects with God. The Holy Spirit dwells in our spirit. The Holy Spirit can touch any part of our being. He can touch our body if he wants to. So sometimes you can actually physically feel the presence of God. He can touch our soul. But always he ministers to us in our spirit. The Bible says the spirit bears witness. That means he communicates. He speaks to us in our spirit. The spirit bears witness with our the Holy Spirit is speaking to you in your spirit. Now we all understand the natural part. We see, we hear, we feel, we taste, we smell. And that information goes into our soul, we process it, and we make, we make decisions, we act. Example, after service, you go for lunch, and somebody says, hey, that chicken tastes real good. You see it, looks good, smell it. Smells good. You heard what they've said. They said thumbs up. Good. So you've got three sensory inputs. What you've seen, what you've smelled, what you've heard. So you process it. said, maybe I should try it. And then you serve yourself. And then you serve yourself again. <laughs> so there are, there are sensory inputs. Inputs that come through your senses. Which you process in your mind. And then you act on it. You do something with it. The same thing. Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives you inputs through your five, we call them spirit senses. You with me? Now, some of us may say, well, I never heard the Holy Spirit speak to me. Well, he's always there. He's always been speaking. You haven't picked the phone up yet. It's been ringing a long time. <laughs> He's been talking because the Bible said the Spirit bears witness with our spirit. So I want to explain these five spirit senses to us. So there is the spirit sense of feeling. You can feel in your spirit. For instance, the feel, feeling of peace in your spirit. It's like a green signal from the Holy Spirit. You come to the traffic light, see green, keep going. So if there is peace in your spirit, the Holy Spirit is saying, fine, go ahead. There's peace in your spirit. So you're about to make a decision, say, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do? Should I go ahead or should I not go ahead? And there is peace in your spirit. It's a green signal. Go ahead. But sometimes in your spirit, you can feel bound. Paul talks about Now all these verses are in the sermon notes. I'm not mentioning it to you. I'd encourage you to study it. In Acts 20, Paul says, I am bound in my spirit. It's like somebody's tied me up. And then he says, the Holy Spirit is telling me, I got trouble waiting for me. So tightness, meaning trouble. Be careful. Warning. Don't step out. Where is he feeling it? He's feeling it in his Spirit. Paul was stirred in his spirit. When he came to Athens, Acts 17, he comes stirred in his spirit. Then he goes out and he preaches. So Holy Spirit saying, Paul, get out there, boy. Speak to these people. And he's stirring them in his spirit. Stirring. I feel compelled, urged to act, do something. The Holy Spirit is through these feelings in your spirit. He's trying to get you to receive a message. He's trying to get you to do something. 
to these feelings. Now, sometimes you feel restlessness. Paul writes about it, 2 Corinthians 2, 13. I felt restless until I came to you. In other words, I couldn't just, there was something inside me. He said, you got to do it. Call these people at Corinth. Dial their number now. Call Apollos. <laughs> so he felt restless until he reached out to them. So sometimes you feel like that in your spirit. Call so and so today. Go meet so and so. The Holy Spirit is talking to you. Through your spirit sense of feeling. He's trying to move you to do something. To reach out to somebody. To call somebody. Pray for somebody. In your spirit. So why doesn't he just slap me on my head and tell me. <laughs> He's gentle like a dove. Amen. He moves you gently. You have to respond. Spirit sense of feeling. So we must learn to pick that up. The spirit sense of seeing. The Bible is full of that. People saw visions. They saw things. Jeremiah, what do you see? I see a pot of boiling water. It's facing north. So what? That means a message. It means from the north, an army is coming to destroy Israel. So God is speaking, but he's using pictures. So through your spirit sense of seeing, God is releasing pictures, images that rise up in your spirit. They come up. So where did this come from? Where does a, a picture come from? The Holy Spirit. Through your spirit sense of seeing is giving you pictures. Sometimes it could be like a movie. Sometimes it comes as a dream in the night. And I have my journal of dreams over the last, I don't know, so many years. Dreams after dreams. God is speaking. I write them down. Things about the future. Write them down. God is speaking. He's speaking. Through your spirit sense of seeing. Gives you a picture. Can give you a vision. Give you a dream. But we must learn to pick it up. Amen? So, for example, tomorrow, if you have to go and your manager comes and says, can you design something for me? I want this to be designed. It's so, Holy Spirit, give me the idea. Give me a design. And listen. Now, don't sit down there in one posture and sit there for two hours. You might get fired. <laughs> but as you go about your work, you do what you're doing, you have to do. But you're listening in your spirit. And suddenly in your spirit, a picture can come of a complete design. And then you, you write it down, you draw it out. And your boss says, where did you get it? So, so I'll tell you later, sir. I'll just <laughs> I'll do it. Later on, you can say, you know, I just prayed. God gave me an idea. You know, whatever language they understand, use that. But the point is, these things come from the Spirit of God. Whole picture, whole design, what to do, solutions can come up in your spirit through pictures. And He's always speaking to us. There's a spirit sense of hearing. What do we hear? We hear words communicated through sound in the natural. But in the spiritual, words are transmitted without sound. So in your spirit, you may receive a word, you may receive a sentence, you may receive full knowledge just coming up in your spirit. You just know, wow, how do I know it? The Holy Spirit was speaking to your ears of your spirit. And knowledge, information was imparted to your spirit without sound. You just came, you just know in your spirit. But that's the Holy Spirit speaking to you in your spirit. Through your spirit sense of hearing. Amen. But we have to hear. That's why in many places you find in the Bible. Let him who has ears to hear. Hear what the spirit is saying. So spirit is saying. But God is saying please open and hear. He's not talking about a natural ears. Or in Isaiah 15 verse 4. He says he opened my ear 
to hear as the learned. So God opened my ear. What ear is he talking about? He's not talking about the natural ears. He's talking about your spirit ears. That God opened your spirit ears. And he caused you to hear from heaven. So the Holy Spirit is speaking. So words, sentences, sometimes whole download of information just comes into your spirit. You know. You know what to say. You know God has spoken. So sometimes when people, for example, people are coming to me, uh, let's say for counseling, it may, if I, I don't, I'm not, we don't call it counseling, but they come to talk to me about something. I'm listening to them, but I'm also listening to God. Say, God, what do you want me to tell them? Sometimes if I don't get any word from God, then what I do, I just share based on my knowledge and experience, and that's okay. That's perfectly fine. You have your journey with God. You've learned some things. You can share with it. That's important. You share based on your knowledge and experience, and that's perfectly fine. That's also valid. But then there are times when I hear clearly, I know God has given me a word for these people to say this to them. And so I share that. But that's different. That's not based on my knowledge and experience. That's based on the word that came through the years of my spirit. It's different. That I just say. Because I know I heard from God. Knowledge and experience is based. That's also valid. It's based on what you've learned and what you understood. That's also important. But there is a difference. And you can tell. God speaks to you in the year of your spirit. Comes without sound. Sometimes there is audible voice. But that's rare. There is spirit sense of taste and smell. And I know this sounds strange. But you have examples in the Bible. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Or Ezekiel and John both had experiences where God said, eat the scroll. That doesn't mean they took the Bible. In. That wasn't it. It was a spiritual thing. But they had a taste. He said it tasted like honey. But when it was about judgment, it was bitter. Because the scroll had written judgment. So the taste indicates the message. So sometimes in your spirit, you get a taste. Sometimes it's a bad taste. God is saying, don't go. Just get out. Leave the place. Don't work with these people. Don't interact. So God is using your spirit sense of taste to give you a message. This is a bad taste. Get out of this place. Same thing. The spirit sense of smell. And there are many scriptures that talk about how our actions are our spiritual incense to God. So in the realm of the spirit, there is incense. There is aroma in the realm of the spirit. Just like we have aroma in the natural. And so sometimes you get pleasant smells which talk about God's presence. God moving to do something. God healing. God delivering. You know from the smell, God is doing something. But then you also have unpleasant smells. God is saying there are evil spirits here. God is saying there is a seducing spirit here. God is saying get out of this place. It's dangerous. So. Pleasant taste and smell in the spirit is a, is a message from God. Unpleasant taste and smell in the spirit is also a message from God. It's different from the natural. So five spirit senses. All of us have these spirit faculties. The Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit. He's speaking to us. Through our spirit faculties. Now there are times. It happens in the natural. You can feel him physically. All of that. That's fine. There are times of course. He speaks to us through the written scriptures. That's also fine. But I'm talking about how the Holy Spirit initiates the gifts of the spirit. How he does it. He initiates these gifts. From our spirit. Through our spirit senses. So what must you and I do? We must train our spiritual senses. Train. Comes through practice. Comes through training. First of all, you open up. Be ready. Be alert. Be sensitive in the spirit. Say, God help me. And the more you listen, the more you can recognize, I know God has spoken. I know God has given me a word for this person. I know that what I'm saying right now is not just a, you know, something through my learning, but this is a word from God. You can draw the distinction. You know the difference through training, through practice. The more you listen to him. It's like on the phone. You know, first, first time somebody calls you, hello, who is this? 
Oh, okay. Second time, you become familiar with the voice. Third time, ha, oh, oh, hi, and you, you know the person. You recognize the voice. So it takes a few times, you recognize it. Same thing with our spirit. We are learning to listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying in our and remember, he can speak to you anytime, anywhere. Not just when you're sitting here in church. Anytime, anywhere. And about anything. It's not the Holy Spirit doesn't say, oh boy, engineering is too hard for me. <laughs> no. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with. Science, engineering, whatever. Your business. The Holy Spirit can speak to you about that. Amen? But it is in our spirit senses, we got to train ourselves. Say, Lord, tell me what you're saying. Is that you? So, I want to encourage all of us to practice and don't be afraid to make mistakes. Why? You're just learning. You and I, we are just learning. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. Try Listening to the Holy Spirit in some simple things. So don't go home and say, Holy Spirit, I have 10 lakhs. Tell me where to invest. Because if you get it wrong, you're going to lose 10 lakhs. Right? So don't jump into something that big. Try out with some small things. Because you want to make sure that you recognize the voice of the shepherd. Jesus said, my sheep, hear my voice. So you want to make sure you're hearing the shepherd, not the voice of your own soul or what somebody else said. You want to make sure. Make sure first, then you act, right? So learn in simple things. So maybe the Holy Spirit prompts you, call somebody. Okay, God, how come I remember this person? I had never thought of that person for like for maybe a month, but suddenly their name, their faces come before me. Okay, God, maybe I should call that person. So you call hide or your message, whatever. And the person said, oh, wow, I was just hoping you'd call. Oh, God, that was you. So now you're getting to understand. That prompting was not accidental. Their face came up before you because the Holy Spirit brought it up. Things like that. So you begin to recognize in simple things. Or going back to our old taxi example, you get into a taxi cab. Say, God, show me something about this person. And God may tell him, tell you, you know, a picture may come. Two sisters who are not married, that's his biggest concern. Okay, God, oh, is that right? Let me check. Say, hi, what are you doing? Naam kya hai? You know, you talk something. And then, and then he starts telling you, you know, my biggest worry is I have two sisters. They are not married. God just spoke that to me. I'm learning. That, what I heard, was really from the Spirit of God. It just confirmed. Now, the taxi man doesn't know. But you are learning to listen to the Spirit. So it means, okay, why did God put that in me? So I can tell him something. Then, you, you know, at, at the appropriate time, if you get the opportunity, you can say, okay, don't worry, I'll pray for them. Something like that, to encourage him. Something, sow a seed. Somebody else will reap it later. But you just sow a seed. You know, I'll pray for you. Or don't worry, I will ask Jesus to help you. That's it. You're just sowing a seed. That taxi man will remember that of the thousands of people he took in his cab, only one person told him, I will pray for you and Jesus will help you. He will remember that. Try it out. Train your spiritual senses to listen to the Holy Spirit. And then, in your everyday life, suppose you have to sign a contract. You pray, God, how about this proposal? Is it right? Do I need to make any changes? And you might feel the Lord prompting, okay, change those numbers. Make it this. You've underestimated here. Change that. Okay, God, rework your proposal. Things like that. So, listen. In everything that you do, train, listen, act on it. And you will become sharper. You can fine-tune your spirit in Listening to God. Let me close with this. The gifts of the Spirit, they manifest through the believer. And 
they also manifest that the Holy Spirit moves according to His sovereign will. So there are times, for example, the gifts of healings, they flow through you. God uses you. He gives you a word and He tells you a particular condition is being healed. The gifts of healings flow through you. There are times the Holy Spirit works that way. And there are times when the Holy Spirit moves sovereignly. That means people are in the audience. Nobody prays for them, but they are just healed. What is that? The gifts of healing released by the Holy Spirit sovereignly as He works. So the Spirit of God works both ways. And we must remain open to both. Amen? Now I realize uh, some of you may have heard these things before. For some of you, this may be totally new. It's like, I didn't know all this was there. But listen, we're getting you ready. Amen? For you to go and make a difference for Jesus Christ in this world. Amen? So what I want to do is this. I want to take a few moments to pray. And I, and we, I want to encourage you this week. I'm going to pray for you that this week you will experience this. That during the course of this week, in your daily life situations, whatever you're doing, that you will feel, you will sense the Holy Spirit speaking to you through one or more of your spirit senses. I'm going to pray over us. I'm going to ask the Lord, Lord, open up our spirit senses. And this week, I want every person to experience this. And whatever you're doing, you tune in. You ask the Lord, Lord, what are you saying? And you see if you, something is coming through your spirit sense of feeling or hearing or your spirit sense of uh, smell or taste or uh, he, uh, hearing or feeling. Is there anything coming? Seeing. Is a picture coming, an idea coming through? You tune in. I'm going to pray that all of us will experience something. Amen? And next Sunday, we'll pick it up. We'll talk about the revelation gifts. Each one, how they operate, how they can be relevant to us in everyday life. For our own benefit, for the benefit of other people, how we can use them in ministry and serving one another. So let's rise to our feet, please. We're going to take a few moments to pray. I'll also just ask our worship team up. Please and uh... as we pray together, would you ask the Lord and say, God, I want to become spiritually sensitive. I want to hear what the Holy Spirit is telling me in my spirit. Awaken my spirit senses. Now, some of you here, I know God has already been working through your life and God has used you in these areas. So this is not unfamiliar to you, but you can pray and say, God, I want to go up and deeper. I want to increase. I want to become more sensitive. I want to hear more. I want to see more. I want to feel more. I want to advance in these things. So you can pray that. And we're all just going to pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity, God, to be instruments in your hands. Holy Spirit, we love you. Thank you for dwelling in us. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for being our comforter, our strengthener, our helper, our guide, our teacher, our counselor. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray over every person here, God, young are old, no matter their age, no matter their background. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will awaken our spirit senses. Open, Lord, our spirit faculties. 
For some of us, we may have never experienced anything like this before. But I ask, Father, that this week, you will give us, each one of us personally, our experiences with the Holy Spirit. And through the course of this week, in whatever we are doing, we recognize the Holy Spirit speaking, the Holy Spirit moving upon our spirit. Awaken our spirit senses. Open them up, Lord. Open our eyes to see. Open our ears to hear. Open our ability to feel the Holy Spirit in our spirit. Our sense of smell and taste in our spirit. Open it up, Lord. Awaken our spirit senses, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Praise you. Oh God, we just praise you. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to pray right now and just ask the Lord, God, awaken my spirit senses. Thank you, O oh Lord. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you. We honor you. I just want to just share a word here for someone. I just see this person playing the piano at home, I guess. You're just playing the piano by yourself. And you're worshiping God. And your desire really is to be a worshiper, to worship God. I just see you playing the piano by yourself at home, just worshiping God. That's your greatest desire. But there are also things happening in your life, difficult, conflicting situations you're going through right now, probably with your spouse, your husband, and things you're going through. And the Lord is with you. The Lord is standing there with you, even in those situations. And He is going to bring healing. It's going to bring that together. The season will pass as you just continue worshiping God. As you continue just being there as a worshiper. The season will pass. And God will bring healing. I don't want to embarrass you. But if, if it's just, just to let us know. If you're here this morning. If you don't mind. You can raise your hand. I just want to pray over your life. Anyone here? See, okay. See that hand. Anybody else here? Okay, God bless you. Just put your hand down. Just, okay. Just receive that word. Say, yes, God sees you doing what you're doing. And that this season will pass. And God will take care of that situation. I just thank you. We praise you and honor you, God. Thank you.
Father, we pray that as we journey with you, we'll encounter more of you, more of your power, your healing, your miracles being released through our lives, our circumstances, our situations. And that mighty things take place through us, through our lives. God, thank you. We honor you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So strange. Anybody here working for Cisco? You know the networking company, Cisco? I work. Anybody else working for Cisco? Only one person? Okay, two people. You also work for Cisco? Anybody else? Okay. I just want to speak all your life because I just got the name of the company. I know it's very strange, but, you know, I just want to speak of both your lives. That in your circumstances, in your situations, I believe God is going to intervene. God is getting ready to bring about change. He's God getting ready to cause you to move up. He's getting ready to open up the doors for you to move up. So be ready for change. Be ready for an uplifting, an increase that God brings into your life, in your organization. Just be ready for that. Even though right now there may be some trouble situations around your job, around what you're doing, that seem like this will not happen. But I believe God just wants to pick you out say this to you this morning I'm going to help you move up I'm going to open up that door for you to move up so don't look at those situations those troubled situations around but know that this morning God is encouraging you God is saying he's going to make that way for you to go up so just receive that don't look at the trouble around the situation you're in presently Father I just release this word for them you confirm it. You open it up for them and let them see that happen on their lives. Thank you, God. Thank you. Father, we just praise you. I'm just going to take a few moments just to pray for healing here. I know there could be people who need healing in their bodies. I'm just going to ask you to lay your hand on your body if you need God to touch and heal. And Father, we ask for the release of your healings, your miracles, right now. Holy Spirit, release your healing power, God, right now. Release your healing power right now. Let sickness, disease be removed. That people receive healing in their bodies. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Can I just take a few moments to worship, worship the Lord and be close? Break up walls down. Spirit break out Heaven come down Spirit break out Break our walls down Spirit break out Heaven come down Spirit break out Spirit break out Break our walls down Spirit break up 
Heaven comes to break Spirit break out Break our walls down Spirit break out Heaven come down Our Father all of heaven knows your name, singing louder. Let this place here up with praise. Can you hear it? The sound of heaven touch your heart. The sound of heaven touch your heart. Our Father, all of heaven knows your name. Sing louder Let this place here up to praise And you hear it The sound of heaven touching our The sound of heaven touching our Spirit break out Break our walls down Spirit break up Heaven come down Spirit break up Break up walls down Spirit break up King Jesus, you're the name we're lifted high, your glory, shaking up the earth and skies, revival, we want to see your kingdom here, we want to see your kingdom here. Spirit break up Break our walls down Spirit break up Heaven come Father, even as we go to this week, as we've prayed and asked, Lord, that all of us will experience the Holy Spirit speaking to us. Thank you, God. Just awakening us, each one of us in this area. Thank you. Let's close, please. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. So, I hope all of you will experience something powerful this week. Amen? Have a great week. See you again. Thanks. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We'd love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also visit our website, apcwo.org, for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.